Welcome to the Cool Things Entrepreneurs Do podcast with your host, Tom Singer. In each episode, we explore the interesting lives of business leaders, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, and others who have a healthy dose of the entrepreneurial spirit. It is time to explore something cool. Now, here is your host, Tom Singer. Well, hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Cool Things Entrepreneurs Do. Thank you so much for pulling your chair up to this virtual cool kids table. Uh, I started this show five and a half years ago with the intent that I would have access to some really smart people doing very cool things in the world of entrepreneurship. And that is exactly what has happened. And the best part, I've been able to share it all with you over now 512 episodes. And when we talk about the cool kids table, today we're really sitting with one of the cool kids. So when I got the background of today's guest, I thought, oh, so he's kind of a dumb shit. I mean, he just has you know a bachelor's degree from Stanford and an MBA from Harvard, which I know everybody listening is thinking, me too. Uh, but uh, he's also just a regular guy who just likes to, to shoot the shit and talk about entrepreneurship, and that's what we do on this show. So today's guest is a gentleman named Will Young. He is the CEO and founder of Sana Benefits, and uh, they have sort of an innovative way of helping small and medium-sized business get lower-cost health care insurance. Now, all of us who are entrepreneurs and working for ourselves, I can't go to a meeting where somebody doesn't complain about the two and maybe $3,000 a month they have to pay for coverage that covers nothing. And uh, I know I live in this, this problem of everything just sucks when it comes to health care. So in addition in, to talking about... Uh, uh, entrepreneurship and things we can learn along the way, I want to find out what those of us who work for ourselves should be and could be doing around our health insurance. So, Will Young, welcome to Cool Things Entrepreneurs Do. Thank you, Tom. That's an amazing introduction. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, people say that all the time. I don't know. I, you know uh, you're good at it. <laughs> so, so, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a lot older than you are, but uh, but you went to Stanford and Harvard, which arguably... Two well-known schools that people have heard of. Uh, yeah, they, right. I, I have a daughter who applied to the Ivy League and what they call the Ivy Plus. Uh, she just graduated recently from Carnegie Mellon, which arguably is the top school in the world, uh, according to people who, <laughs> according to people who went to Carnegie Mellon. But it's yeah, certainly it's up a in cool place. it's it's up in that upper crust of of places that you went. But here's the thing: you probably don't know about me, Will. I mm. went to school. At the wow. number one, at the number one party school in America in the mid eighties, oh, and wow. it really wasn't even disputed in the eighties that San Diego State University was the number one party school in America. To get in, you needed a two O in high school, and you had to be able to fog a mirror. <laughs> uh, Man, I, in San Diego, what a great place to spend a, spend a few years. People always ask me, how did you leave San Diego? And I'm yeah. like, well, it was my college town. I had to get out and start a life or I would have been the guy showing up at the frat house, you know, yeah. going, like at I 28 think, like, years old. It's like, I didn't want to be that guy. Yeah, San Diego or like UC Santa Barbara. There's some, <laughs> there's some places that are just like, ah, like why would you leave? Right, these right. Places? But, but I left, but I ended up in Austin. So, you know, yeah. well, I mean, there you, go. you can't beat Austin, so. That's right. So it's like San Diego, but they took away the ocean. It's like San Diego and, and added humidity, you know, whatever. Right, right. So, hey, Will, so I don't like, I always say I don't read the, the fancy bios that your PR and marketing people send. Uh, I like to just have a conversation. So who is Will Young and, and what's your backstory? Yeah. So without the, the fancy PR stuff. Um, so I, uh, um, I grew up in Arizona uh, with a family of entrepreneurs uh, you know, my dad had his own business. My mom had her own business. Uh, I had aunts and uncles and cousins who, uh, you know, ran their own businesses. So I've always, I've always admired entrepreneurs and, uh, uh, went to Stanford undergrad, which is sort of where they take that initial idea of entrepreneurship and they just, uh, they accelerate it. Uh, you're surrounded by people that are like my, my freshman roommate dropped out of Stanford to start a tech business that he was the, the engineer and founder of. And, so I was surrounded by that and I sort of took a meandering path, uh, but arrived back where, uh, I think I knew I always, always wanted to be, which is starting my own business and then, and using tech to, to, uh, uh, enable that business. So, uh, spent time in LA and entertainment, worked at Google for a couple of years, then went to get my MBA and then joined this really cool startup called JustWorks. Uh, and what I love about JustWorks was they focused on something really unsexy, but really important, which was payroll and benefits. And I learned to really appreciate how these businesses that 
on the surface are not that cool, right? It's not Snapchat. It's not Instagram. It's not Facebook. Uh, but they, they deliver this thing that's so important for people. And, and I loved it. And they built an amazing business. That's still a great business. Uh, and that's where I had the seed of the idea for this health insurance startup that I started a couple of years ago. And, um, took the lessons of just works with me into starting this company, uh, sauna benefits. So tell us about sauna business benefits. What's, what is the company? So we're a, a new kind of health plan for small and medium businesses. Um, there's a lot of waste in the system, uh, in healthcare, uh, that, you know, it's probably no surprise to anyone, as you were saying, people that pay two or $3,000 a month and don't get much for it. Uh, there's a sense that something's wrong. And what we've done is we've, we dived into the system and found ways of, of creating efficiencies. And then we've turned those into really high quality benefits that are really low cost. Uh, so we're, we're operating in Texas exclusively today, but hope to be in many States, uh, in the coming years. But, uh, but yeah, it's, we're trying to fix the healthcare system from the in, inside out. And the way we're doing that is by offering really great health plans for businesses. Nice. Nice. So, you know, you start off, you like said, your dad was an entrepreneur. So you sort of fell into this. You, you grew up around it. A lot of people who come on the show didn't their their parents had traditional jobs. And so it was a, a different path to get there, but this mm. is really all you've done. I mean, from being an employee in a startup to having your own. So what is it that you like about this world? Why are you drawn to it? What makes entrepreneurship cool to uh, will? There's a lot, there's a lot that's really appealing. Um, my dad was a different kind of entrepreneur and my mom was also a different kind of entrepreneur. Both of them, they were, so, they were sole practitioners, right? They had a consulting company or a sort of a business they ran themselves. And what I admired that they had that I have less and less of is <laughs> they could wake up every day and decide what they wanted to do, right? They had autonomy and independence uh, and uh, they didn't have to, they, they, they didn't answer anybody. Uh, and I, I love that. I thought, man, how great would it be if you could just be the author of your own life and wake up every day? And when we started Sana, Nathan, my co-founder and I, when we started Sana uh, two and a half years ago, it was that way. You would wake up every day. And uh, if you wanted to do nothing for the first six hours, that was fine. If you wanted to uh, dive really deeply into some obscure topic in health insurance, like pharmacy rebates or network structure, you could like just you could conduct your own independent research and, and I loved it. Um, these days now that we're starting to turn the corner and get a, a little bit more success and customers, all of a sudden you have these constituencies that you need to, uh, to, to work with. And it's a different kind of excitement where we're actually building something. And so I wake up every day excited to fulfill the vision that we've laid out. Uh, but I've, I've lost that autonomy to a large degree, which I, I mourn sometimes, but, uh, um, <laughs> But there's other amazing things going on. Like we're realizing what we set out to do. Well, and you're working in a business that is in need of solutions. If ever there was an industry in need of solutions, it's everything that touches healthcare. So you're obviously you're obviously in a good space. Is that inspiring? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's daunting. <laughs> um, go go fix. Well, we'll go fix. Will you fix this, please? Yeah. Uh, you know, I was watching the, uh, the democratic debates recently and, uh, um, you know, well, what's clear is that people know something's broken. They know something's deeply wrong and they don't really know how to fix it. And so they're throwing out all these ideas. Um, but the ideas themselves are sort of at the surface layer. When you dig deeper, the problems are actually much, much more complicated and trickier to solve than the sort of what you get at a debate level. And, uh, and what's exciting is that we're working at that level. We're going deeper. We're actually trying to fix the things that are underneath everything. Um, and, it, and that's exciting. It's, uh, it's challenging. It's fun. But it's like you can see the, the road ahead is, is very long and the work to do is, is massive. And, uh, and it's great. Like I, I can see myself dedicating my life to, to working on this kind of problem. Uh, and that's fulfilling, but it's also a long road ahead. It's like, it's like the first few steps of a marathon. You're like, man, this marathon's going to be great, but then it's also a marathon. <laughs> Have you run a marathon? Uh, no, I've, I've done a half marathon. I've done some long bike rides, so I've, I've never, uh, I've never done a full. I've done a half marathon. And after you, as you know, because you've run one, after you run a half marathon, all your friends who are runners come up to you and they say, now that you've run a half, you're going <laughs> to want, you're going to want to run a hole. They're, yeah. they're lying. <laughs> Yeah, I do not want to run a hole. I have no desire to do that. 
I, I'm not a runner. I'm, I'm uh, running is a, a necessary evil to stay in shape. Uh, I, I'm still in search of the thing that's going to be my my silver bullet to keep fit. I never yeah. ran a mile in my life till I was 50. And, uh, oh and, and I started training for a half marathon in the last three years. Now I run about 10 or 12 miles a week, but uh, wow, I, I never had run ever, but it was, it was me versus 30 pounds. And, uh, because of the running I've won. Yep. The running is a key, key thing there for sure. So what advice do you have for people who are listening who think, yep, I want to do this entrepreneur thing. What, what would you tell them? Um, I think once they become an entrepreneur, running is a good, a good, a good tip. Actually, <laughs> staying in re- really good shape. But when you're when you're thinking about being an entrepreneur, um, I I would say that most people are not entrepreneurs, um, and by that I mean like there's nothing that special about being an entrepreneur. Um, it's just very hard. Uh, I'm sure you know you have built your your podcasting business and uh, your consulting business, and uh, there. Are, you have to really want to do it in order to get through. It is much easier to just get a job. And I think most people want to live their lives and work is work and they've got their lives. And like, that's very healthy. You have to be, you have to have something underneath that's really pushes you through the, the hard times. And so if you're, if you're thinking about being an entrepreneur, I'd say first is like really reflect. Don't, don't make a decision lightly to do it. I've known that I, I've thought I've, I wanted to be an entrepreneur from the time I was young, but I didn't even really know until I tried it. So once you think you have conviction, the only way to know is to really get out there and try it. And the good news is if you hate it, the consequences are not that great from, from failure. So you can just go back and get, get a job afterwards and it's, it's, it's not the end of the world. So um, I would say really think deeply about how much you want it. And then when you decide to take the leap, uh, you'll learn quickly <laughs> whether, whether you're right. <laughs> well, and, 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 and if you like it, God save you. Cause it's what you're going to, all you're going to want to do. I've been working for myself for 10 and a half years. And while I, everybody always says I've, who's done this, they say, Oh, I think I'm unemployable now. I actually have the opposite outlook. I think I would be mm. the best employee ever. If you hired mm. me to come work at sauna, I would probably hug you every day before I left. Cause someone else would have to deal with, <laughs> with all the BS and I could just do, I could just focus on my task instead of everything else. I'd be the best employee ever. What a luxury. Yeah, exactly. How great would that be? However, you know, I, I also set out, you know, 15 years ago and when I was in sales and marketing, I I would go to conferences and I would see these people who were professional speakers and I would literally watch them and think they have a better job than I do. So it's what I wanted to do. It took me four or five years to figure it out. It's all I've done now for 11 years. And when I have the opportunity to go in and work with a company it for me, it's huge because I like yeah. it, and I know I make a difference in getting people to really take action. So for me, it's it's become part of who I am. So I always tell people the same thing: if if you go down this path and you like it, God save you. Yeah, that's right. Um, I, I I'm probably in the category of of now unemployable. Um, just the idea of not being able to set the direction and and build something that I feel a, a lot of ownership over would be very hard. Um, <laughs> It's probably what my my boss at JustWorks. So the CEO of JustWorks is a is a mentor and an investor in what we're doing, and uh, uh, he uh, he he was the perfect boss. He gave me a ton of autonomy. He taught me so much stuff, um, and and I left that job because I think it just it was like I couldn't work for anyone anymore. You know, it just. Yeah. Well, I, 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 the, one of the best jobs I ever had is I was the marketing director for a law firm. And I was with these lawyers for five years at two different firms. And my joke is, is that the, the partners that I worked for gave me a lot of rope and their only instruction was don't hang yourself. And, mm. you know, so I liked having that autonomy. I ran the entire marketing department as if it was my own business. And actually on the anniversary every year, I would go meet with all the partners individually and say, if I was a contractor, I mean, I, I was an employee, but if I was a contractor, would you rehire me for a year? And I remember like the third time one of the partners looked at me and he goes, you would never ask a question you didn't know the answer to. He goes, you know, <laughs> he goes, you know, we don't want you to go anywhere. And he goes, you just asked that question so you can feel good. And I'm like, well, maybe, maybe that's true. But it was, it was really, I wanted to just have, you know, that justification that if I, if I was a vendor, would they keep bringing me back? So that was, you know, now I am a vendor and people keep bringing me back. So that's good. Um, I have a new question on this show that I ask people. Okay. And that is how, how important do you think it is for an entrepreneur to both trust in themselves and then also to like themselves? Huh. Um, 
Well, I think trusting in yourself is less of a problem because if you have gotten to the point where uh, you've left some other job to pursue your own vision, you probably already have a uh, a crazy degree of like a certain kind of confidence. You've got a certain kind of overconfidence. Like you believe that your vision of the world is better in some distinct way than everyone else's vision of the world. And you have to have, like, I certainly have, have this trace underneath it all where I'm like, I see something other people don't. Uh, I'm going to make a, an impact on the world. No one else can. And so there, there is that undercurrent. Um, I think something else you see with founders, and this gets back to sort of liking yourself is I mean, mental health is obviously a problem that you hear people talk about a lot. And uh, it is very hard because you might have that core belief, but you enter a world where no one else does. Um, even with, you know, I've got a lot of great credentials. That doesn't mean investors said yes in the early days. It doesn't mean that early employees understood what we were doing. It doesn't mean customers were going to buy my product. So, you enter a world where you're like, I've got this shiny new thing that I know is great and nobody else sees it that way. Uh, you've got like a big chunk of rock and you're like, there is a statue of David in here. And, and people are like, no, that's, that's just concrete. Uh, and, uh, and you're fighting that every day. And so you, I don't know if it's about liking yourself, but it, it, it wears you down. Uh, and you have to have tremendous resilience like that the resilience of your self-confidence definitely gets tested. Uh, and it helps if you like your co-founder, my co-founder and Nathan, we get along great. And I think we see the world very similarly. And uh, as a first time entrepreneur, having him there alongside me was uh, really important for that reason. Uh, it helped me not like dip too deep when things were going not as great. Um, and yeah, I think you have to, you have to, you have to believe uh, liking yourself. Like uh, I think some people might, you, I could see, uh, I never, I never got so dark or so depressed about where we were. Although there were definitely times uh, and there probably will be times in the future where we're threatened and, uh, and it's not going that great. Um, but I could see if, if I hadn't had such a good support network that um, it would have been easy to get real dark real fast. And uh, I'm sure people struggle with that. Yeah, and I mean, I, I've sort of discovered that sometimes I would listen to what other people had to say and let it sink in a little bit too much, and maybe that caused me not to really like myself enough. And I don't think I don't think we, if we don't think about it, uh, sometimes we don't even notice it. You can carry it around for years, and it's it's not just self doubt, but it's like you know you question, you know, am I good? Am I worthy? You know, and uh, so I've found this to be an interesting question. I've started asking it when I'm actually sitting having a beer with people. Uh, and I've just, in the last couple of episodes, started bringing it into the show. And it, it's interesting to see the answers from people. So thank you for being candid on that. Yeah, it's a real thing. I, I think especially for people that are considering entrepreneurship uh, or, you know, making that leap, it's 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 one of the harder things. I actually think it's the hardest thing is just keeping stable, like not getting overexcited uh, and then not getting over depressed at the highs and lows, like just maintaining an even keel. I think that's probably the biggest, uh, the biggest change between me now and when, when we started the company is I'm unfazed in any part of the cycle. And, and that's, I think an adaptation that's a, a sort of emotional self-protection. So when I go into companies and I work with them, I talk about this gap that exists for individuals and for teams between potential and performance. Cause we get excited about potential, but the truth is potential doesn't equal results. It really doesn't mean anything if we don't do something with it. So why mm -hmm. do you think some entrepreneurs who start a company and they have potential, some of them just fly across that gap and other people fall into the abyss? What's the delta? Yeah, it's a really interesting question. Um, and really, it's, I mean, it's, it's extreme. Like even the difference between a successful entrepreneur and Facebook is extreme. It's so like, what, you know, what did Mark Zuckerberg realize? Like what was about his potential that was so easier to realize than, uh, you know, an order of magnitude, lesser company or two orders of magnitude, smaller company, like, well, what's the difference? Um, so I think it happens at every level in the very beginning. Um, the quality of your idea matters a lot. 
uh, and that requires a lot of integrated thinking. So picking the right problem, right, the right market with the right team uh, and the right idea, that matters so, so much because you can solve, I don't know, there, there's a culture of pivoting, uh, which, you know, you could say, oh, like, don't think so much about that bottoms up, like iterate your way to the right thing. But I think you at best you get to a local maximum there. I think the, the most important thing in the beginning is like picking the potential, right? Like picking something that's really big, a really big problem that you can take a big bite out of. And then when you bring on your early employees, like picking the right fit of skills, so like a complementary set of skills, um, as someone who went and got an MBA, you see a lot of startups that are like four MBAs get together and start a company. And, uh, it's sort of obvious that it's a recipe for failure because you've got like four co-CEOs and that's not going to work. And like, they could all be individually high potential people, but their collective potential is, is much less because they don't have this complementary skill set. And so, uh, working at JustWorks and finding Nathan, who's this amazing software engineer and thinks about the world a little bit differently than I do, um, finding someone complimentary. So getting the, the idea and the team. And then once you have the right people going against the right problem, I think it's about building a culture of uh, giving them, giving people the autonomy and resources they need to just do what they do really well and, uh, and, and getting out of their way. I, once, once you get above like a handful of people though, realizing potential there's a lot of like organizational design principles and communication principles that come into play uh, that are more complicated. And we're, we're 40 people now. Uh, so we're, we're sort of just crossing the threshold where like, how do you set goals? How do you get, you know, how do you take the asks from the sales team and filter that into uh, something the product team uh, can prioritize and use, how do you apply resources against these different projects? And, and, like what frames are important? Like is capital efficiency the most important thing? Is like new product development the most important thing? Is customer satisfaction the most important thing? And so you have these, this integrated thinking challenge that once you're actually building the company, um, I think that is actually the real, that, that's why I think Facebook was able to realize so much potential. Yes, they've got like network effects and things working in their favor, but companies like that that achieve really outsized success invest in really smart organizational principles and culture. Uh, and, uh, and that, that's, uh, that's a dark art that, uh, we're, we're just starting to practice. <laughs> so, Will, I could talk to you all day long, keep asking you questions and I'm going yeah. to, I'm going to, we've got more questions, but first, <laughs> first I have to thank the sponsor of this episode. So Great. this episode, like all of them is brought to you by Podfly Productions. Podfly takes the time and the headache out of starting your own podcast. They set you up with the right equipment, training, and guidance to ensure that you sound amazing. Podfly does all the heavy lifting and the technical work so that you can focus on creating great content, growing your audience, and interviewing really cool people like Will Young. Hey, if you want to start a podcast, and I know that some of you do, jump over to podfly.net slash cool things and check out the offer that they have for the listeners of this show. So Will, I call this show Cool Things Entrepreneurs Do. What is the coolest thing you're doing in business right now? We do a lot of cool things. Um, I'd say the, the thing that matters most in the world that is super cool is we are offering health insurance plans that cost 30% less really good health insurance plans. And, and I'd say the, the most exciting piece of that, the coolest piece of that is we do it with really amazing service. So we've got these individuals who, one of the big problems with our healthcare system is people are just abandoned. They go and they have uh, you know, a baby delivered or they get a knee surgery and months go by and then they get a bill for $40,000 and they freak out because there's no one that helps them understand it or get through it. And because we have all these clever ways on the back end of saving money, we're able to invest in really high quality service. So helping people through their healthcare journey is really exciting to us. And that's ultimately why we're, we're building the company we're building. Uh, and then helping the business uh, save money so it can invest in what it does best uh, and invest in its employees more is, is really, that's exciting. On the back end, the way that sausage is made is also really cool. So like we, one cool thing that I think is really awesome that we're doing is we've built 
all of our own software to power everything. So enrollments, claims adjudication, underwriting, like all the boring back back office stuff that insurers do. And because we've built our own software, we can automate a lot of stuff. So claims come to us digitized and we are automatically tagging how we should pay for claims and routing them appropriately, uh, just using sophisticated rules engine that we've built in-house. And so we've got a, a, an operations team member and a, a software engineer that all they're doing all day is just optimize, like maximizing the amount of automation that happens on the back end. Um, and it, if you're sort of a nerd that likes uh, like how that stuff works, the mechanics of that, and then the potential of impact of that on, on having us run more efficiently as a business, I, I mean, that's the stuff that I find super cool. Uh, but that's not something that customers really care about. <laughs> no, but that's, you know, if that's the cool stuff, that's what makes, that's how, that's how we make this stuff work. So that's good. Yeah. All right. So I love to ask people who come on the show. I like to know who they admire in the world of entrepreneurship and the entrepreneur sphere. When you look out there, who do you say, Hey, she or he, they're really, they're doing cool stuff. So many people, um, like w- one of the amazing things, I think particularly with, um, all these cloud services that you can use to launch. I mean, here we are now on a, a you know, Zoom call and you're, uh, we're both sort of working in a more freelance sort of way. Like you can build businesses um, with very little upfront cost. And there's so many people that are doing um, amazing things. Um, a good friend of mine uh, from JustWorks also uh, just uh, just announced that he raised a Series B for his company called Lively. They do modern HSAs. Uh, and I love what he's doing because I think he shares a similar vision. This guy, Alex Syriac, he, uh, uh, he shares a vision for making the healthcare system work better. And he's gotten into all the boring stuff, similar to how I've gotten into all the boring stuff. And he's figured out a more efficient way of doing things that results in a better experience. Um, and I just love people that do that, that go deep on an industry. Like there's a lot of folks that like, uh, freight forwarding, you know, there's a whole bunch of companies in the like supply chain logistics space. Guy Ryan Peterson's running that company. Um, there's a company called Lambda School, I think is really interesting. This guy, Austin Allred, who uh, uh, they educate you on being a software developer for free. And then they get paid back with these income share agreements that give you a percentage mm-hmm. of, of uh, what you earn in your salary in your next job. Just people are doing really innovative things all over. And I'm, uh, I'm constantly in awe. That's yeah, no, I, I think there are so many people. I mean, my, my list, because I get to talk to, you know, 50 to a hundred entrepreneurs a year on this show. And then I, I, I speak to audiences. I mean, it's not entrepreneur audience necessarily, but I speak to like 15,000, 20,000 people a year. And I get to meet so many people who come up and tell me what it is they're up to that my, my list of people I admire is longer than, you know, I could even keep track of anymore. So, Yeah. Uh, the last question I ask everybody who comes on the show is what do you do to give back to the greater good? Cause in reality, I believe if we're entrepreneurs, we're fortunate and if we're fortunate, we got to do more to make money. So, so how, how do you serve humanity? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so I look at what we're doing with this company as, as giving back. So and maybe that's sort of like a, an evasive answer, but it really is core to core to my beliefs about, why I feel good getting up in the morning and doing what we do. Um, I think when you build a successful company, there's these different constituencies that you have to take care of. You know, there's your investors, there's your employees, there's your customers, and then there's society at large. And a lot of times those different groups interests diverge. A lot of times they're the same. Um, But I think unless you can build a company that actually satisfies each one of those groups, uh, you haven't built a business unless you can, unless you, uh, unless each one of those groups is way better off because of interacting with, with your system you put together that we call a company. Um, and society at large, like I think the reason we started this company is because healthcare, I mean, healthcare is one fifth of our economy and the numbers in healthcare are so big. It, it's just, it's, it's like the stars in, in the galaxy kind of size of, of numbers that you just like our brains shut off. And we don't realize how, how big it is. Like it is $3 trillion going to healthcare every year. Uh, if it was ten, like that, that's 10, $300 billion markets, or that is a hundred 
$30 billion markets. Like it is, it is so massive and it is so broken. And so if I was to think, what is the highest leverage thing I can do when I wake up in the morning and make society better? It's make sauna as successful as possible because then we'll have a bigger impact. Of course, helping the community, like we, we do some team building events where we go and we worked at a food bank uh, a couple weeks back when we had our all team on site. I think being conscientious about our community uh, and giving back in, in those ways is important too. But, um, you know, when I think about impact, I think about how do you do it at scale in a way that actually changes society. And uh, the way to do that is to build a sustainable, high impact business. Awesome. Hey, Will, thank you so much for being a guest here on Cool Things Entrepreneurs Do. Any last words of wisdom? No, Tom, this is great. Uh, I really appreciate the time. Uh, and uh, yeah, I look forward to continuing the conversation as, as we uh, continue to grow. So if somebody's listening to this and they think, I must know more about Will Young, okay, right. or, or they're like, wait a minute, I live in Texas and Sana Benefits might yeah, be what okay. I'm looking for. How do they find you? Yeah, so uh, any entrepreneur out there that's got a business and wants to save money on their expensive health insurance or offer their employees better health insurance, look us up at uh, www.sanabenefits.com. That's S-A-N-A benefits.com. Uh, and uh, we'll help you out. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for being a guest on the show. And thank you to everybody who tuned in and listened. I say it every episode. If it wasn't for the audience, why would we do this? I mean, I started this show for myself. I wanted access to cool people like Will, but I've been able to bring thousands of people per episode along for the ride. And uh, that has been a lot of fun for me. Uh, please, if you like the show, go and tell somebody. People say all the time, I say, how'd you find the show? They go, oh, someone told me about it. And then one person told me they, they binged watched for like an or binge listened for an eight hour drive. I'm like, that is too much, Tom. I wouldn't listen to myself for eight hours. And I've tried. But uh, really, if you like the show, go and tell somebody else. It's the way the audience grows. And I love it if you'd go over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review, uh, maybe five stars, talk about what it is that draws you to listening to the show. Uh, that just helps the show get found more. Uh, Apple's really weird in the way they do that. They want they want more and more people to subscribe constantly. And the celebrities have took over the podcast world. But uh, I did read the other day that Cool Things Entrepreneurs Do, number 13 entrepreneurial podcast in Ireland. I don't know why. But uh, my grandparents would be very proud of that. Uh, so please uh, go in and leave your reviews and tell friends about the show. We're going to be back in a couple of days with another interview with somebody just as cool as Will Young. And I know you're thinking, Tom, how will you ever find anyone as cool as Will Young? But we always seem to do it. But in the meantime, go out there. Try something new. Challenge yourself. Get out of your comfort zone. And while you're at it, have a great day. Thank you for being part of the Cool Things Entrepreneurs Do podcast. Without your participation and listening to these conversations, there is no show. Connect with Tom at TomSinger.com and follow him on Twitter at, at TomSinger. TomSinger.com